Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is part 5 on this review of this motor function control unit made by Tamiya. Alright, for this step you're going to need your own radio, radio control. Now I have decided to use this Flysky FSI6. This is a 6 channel controller. And what I like about this control is the 3 position switch right here that you have first, second, and third. So this one is perfectly for the transmission, to shift the transmission for those gears when you're driving the truck. So that's what I like about this this um, controller. Okay, and I'm gonna show you now the, the box. Now here's the box. Okay, and right here on the side is the specifications. Okay, you can pause it to read it if you wanna know the details. Okay, and I bought this radio at Hobby Concepts. This is a uh, modified radio, ready to just plug and play. And um, right here at Hobby Concepts, Bob is the YouTuber and he, he builds great trucks. I think he's an expert at building Tamiya trucks. So if you wanna check him out, check this his channel at Hobby Concepts. Now, I'll write the information on the description of this video in case you're interested in buying one of these radios and also the link to Hobby Concepts. Now, I'm going to show you the receiver because it does come with the receiver. All right, so here's the receiver that comes with the radio. It's a six channel receiver. Right there, you can see, very nice receiver. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is connect these cables. These cables are already labeled. You have uh, J4. You have J4, J5, J6, and J7. Okay, those are the ones that I'm going to connect first. Okay, right there you can see a better view because it got a little bit blurry. Now on the receiver, uh, if you notice right here, on the bottom right here, it has the S, which means the signal wire. Then you have the positive in the middle and then you have the negative on the far end. So that represents the pins. So the S is for this pin, that's the signal pin. The positive is the middle pin, and then the negative is the far to the side of the uh, receiver. That's the last pin. So that's how you know how to connect the, um, the which way to plug them in, to plug this plug, okay? So instead of plugging it like this, you're going to plug it in this way. All right, just like this. All right, so J4 goes to channel one. All right, just like this. J6 goes to channel two. Alright, just like this, J5 to channel 3, alright, just like this, and J7 to channel 4. All right, just like this. Now J8 is the steering, okay? Your steering servo. Okay, this one is going to go to the directly to the MFC, the motor function control unit, and it's going to go to the first one right here. Now on the MFC, the outer pin is the negative, the middle pin is the positive, and the right pin is the signal wire. So, J8 is going to go like this. Now for J9, you're going to need an extra servo. And this one is going to unlock the fifth wheel and also lock the fifth wheel. Now it's optional, you don't have to, but it's really nice. Uh, it's a nice feature to have to be able to unlock it 
from the remote control and J9 goes like this now J10 is the shifting server okay to shift the transmission for the gears and this one goes to the receiver to channel 5 Right, just like this now I'm going to connect the motor cables okay green goes with green just like this until it clicks and then cover it with the insulation rubber this protective rubber and then the yellow one right there okay and do the same thing cover it with the protective uh, rubber all right just like this and now for the battery the battery that I'll be using is a 7.2 volt 3800 milliamps battery pack okay and is the brand is Tenergy and it, it comes with the standard Tamiya connector so that's what's really nice about this battery pack it's already uh, ready to plug and play okay here's the battery pack Okay, and here's the uh, connector. Okay, already made for Tamiya plugs. Okay, now my charger comes in this box, same company, Tenergy, universal smart charger, and it's made for six volts up to 12 volts, NIC battery packs. All right, and now let me show you the uh, actual charger. All right, so here's the uh, charger. Okay, and again, it comes with the uh, Tamiya plug, ready to just plug and play. All right, very nice charger. All right, so now I'm ready to connect the battery and turn this truck on. Now, before I turn the truck on, I'm going to make sure that this switch is in the middle position. Okay, make sure that this switch is in the middle because if, if it's moved, the truck might not turn on. So make sure this is in the middle position, okay? All right, and now I connect the battery. All right, so now I'm ready to turn this radio on. Okay, and this warning comes up saying place all switches in their up position and lower the throttle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and now I'm ready to turn on the truck. Now I'll be holding this vibration motor in my hands because it vibrates a lot and I don't want it to be vibrating all over the table while I'm recording. Okay, so now I'm ready to turn on the truck. Here we go. All right, look at that, very nice. Okay, very nice sound once the truck uh, starts, very nice. Now you can adjust the volume by this switch right here on the right. This one, if you turn it, it's louder. It makes the sound louder. So right now I have it in uh, a little bit lower, so it's not that loud, okay? But you, you can adjust it, very nice. Now, if you notice, when you push the throttle forward and the truck starts to go backwards or when you steer to the right and the steering goes the other direction, don't worry about it because there's one more step to completing the setup and that is called mapping. Now, mapping is simply teaching the MFC how to communicate with the radio. Now, to do mapping, all you need to do is press this button right here on your MFC. and the truck is going to turn off and on your control unit you're going to see a blinking light now push the throttle stick all the way up all the way down recenter right left recenter now on your right stick all the way up all the way down right left recenter now push back the button on the mfc all right just like this and the truck is going to turn on all right and now the programming is complete after finishing mapping the mfc to your radio control if your truck is steering in the wrong direction here's one way 
that you can fix that. On your radio control, you will need to reverse the channel for that servo. So for this radio, this is how you do it. Press the OK button. Now hold the OK button. And that takes you to the setup. Now push up. Now press OK. Now you will see that it says reverse. Press OK. And now it takes you to the uh, channels. On the top, it has all the channels. And then you see the word norm. And that, then the other word reverse. So you push up or down to select which one you want, normal or reverse. So after selecting, selecting the uh, what you want, like for my case, I push reverse. I select reverse, I mean. Now to save it, to save the new setting, I hold the cancel button. Hold the cancel button, okay. Now to double check if it did got saved, I push OK and now it is saved. Okay, so my channel one, which is the steering, now I reverse it and it's highlighted right here. Okay, and now my steering should be working properly. Okay, right there you can see, I turn right, it turns right, left, it turns left. So now it's working properly. All right, and that's how you uh, change it. And now you can just exit by canceling pushing the cancel button and it's gonna exit push it again and there you go that's how you reverse the channel for that servo now anytime you make changes to your radio control like programming you must remap the MSC to the radio again this way you make sure that your truck works properly now I'm going to go ahead and do this off the camera that way this video is not too long and now for the fun part what are the functions of this motor function control unit, the MFC-01? Alright, so I'm going to start with the uh, left uh, stick. I'm going to push forward the throttle. Okay. And the truck goes forward. Okay. Now back on the stick. And the truck will go backwards. Okay. Also, if you go forward, and then slightly back, you get your stop light. And then if you go back again, you get your reverse light. Now you can also shift the transmission gears by using the left stick. Turn to the left. Now give it throttle. That's first gear. The middle is second gear. And all the way to the right is third gear. Now, if you have this type of radio control, you can also switch the transmission gears by using this three position switch. First gear, second gear, third gear, second gear, first gear. All right. I think that this is easier to shift while you're driving. So that's what I like about this uh, radio control. Now, the right stick, when you turn the stick to the right, the truck will still to the right and the turn signal comes on. If you move the stick to the left, the truck will steer to the left and the turn signal also comes on and on the back of your truck the turn signals will also come on when you steer to the right and when you steer to the left now if you push the stick up you get the horn the long horn if you push the stick down you get your short horn now that's all the functions with the dual switch up now this one i have not assigned this switch to anything or this one also is not assigned to anything so this one now i'm going to show you the functions with this dual switch down now to control this servo the one that unlocks the fifth wheel and locks the fifth wheel what you need to do is flip this switch down left stick all the way to the right you hear a click right stick move it up and then you see that you can control the servo this is to unlock the fifth wheel now to turn the servo off, again, left stick all the way to the right. You hear it click and then move the stick up, the right stick, and the servo is off. Now you can also turn off the truck with just the remote control. To do that, keep the switch down. The left stick, you're going to move it to the right. And the right stick, you're going to move it up, all the way up at the same time. Just like this and the truck turns off. 
Now to turn it back on, the same thing, both sticks at the same time, and the truck turns on. Now if you want to put the truck in parking and be able to rub the engine, just simply move the stick to the left, you hear it clicking, now you can rub the engine. Alright, very nice, this is a very nice feature. Now to turn it off, move the stick again to the left, you hear it clicking, and now you can give it throttle. Right there. Very easy. Now to turn the lights on on the truck, make sure your dual switch is in the down position. Now the right stick, push it down, and your top marker lights, they come on, and also the interior lights, they come on. Now there's four lights right here, and in the phone it's pretty bright, it's hard to tell, but there's actually four lights. And what's nice about these lights is that you can solder some extra lights to this cable, that way you can install extra lights on the outside of the truck. So that's what's really nice about those lights. Now if you push the right stick again down, you get your headlights, and they're pretty bright, alright? Now if you push it again down, you get your fog lights, and if you push down again on the right stick, the lights turn off. And if you want your hazard lights, just push the right stick up and you get your ha hazard lights. Okay, now if you want to do a combination on your entire lights, repeat the process down, down again, and again, and you get all your lights. Okay, and also on the back, you have your stop lights too. Okay, all right, that easy, and it looks really nice. Now, after you're done, you can push again down, turn them off, and push up again on the right stick, and all your lights are off. Now, that's all the functions with the dual switch down. After you're done, flip it back up, now on the MFC, you have two knobs. Now this one is the BR2. Now this one, if you move it to the right, you get more vibration. If you move it to the left, you get less vibration. Now this one is the BR1. Now this one is for adjusting the three channel dead band trimmer. Now this one, I'm not gonna move. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then this button is to map the MFC to your radio control. And then this one, this is a switch. If you turn it to the left, you're going to change the sound on your hazard lights, on your turn signals. It's gonna make a different sound. So right now I have mine turned to the uh, switch to the right. So that's what this switch does. And then this plug is when you wanna add lights to your trailer. Now for that, you're gonna have to buy this semi-trailer light set that inside it comes with this wire, this, this uh, set. Okay, and this plug is the one that connects to this plug right here. Okay, and then there's one more plug. This one, this one you do not use. Now, if you run into a problem with the MFC and you wanna reset it to the factory setting, then what you do is you press that button and at the same time, you're going to turn on the control, your radio control. So for example, right now I just turn off the radio okay right there and now you press the button and turn on the control at the same time and that's going to reset the mfc back to the factory settings all right now all this setup is a little bit different from what the instructions say and that's because i'm using this type of radio so in your case it might be a little bit different but everything else is the same all right, that's it for this video. And if you made it this far in this video, I thank you so much. And hit that like button if you like this type of videos. And consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one.